Let's start off with finally getting that, uh, that over the line when it comes to the parliamentary majority. What does it mean in terms of the mandate to govern and how much you'll still have to work with uh, these minor parties and independents? Well, it's going to be a big relief for Prime Minister Anthony Albanese. It means that in the lower house of parliament, uh, he can uh, pass any bill he wants uh, in any parliamentary procedures with a pretty clean sweep. But unfortunately for him, Australia has two houses of parliament. And in the upper house of parliament, the Senate, uh, there is a crossbench there that has veto power over his agenda. That's likely to be 12 senators from the Australian Greens Party, one former football player, uh, uh, David Pocock from the Australian Capital Territory and possibly even a couple of other Tasmanian senators, all of whom have asked for greater action on climate change. Anthony Albanese says he wants 43% cuts to emissions by 2030. The Australian Greens say they want 70%. And they've also said they want no new coal or gas mines, something which Albanese has not even countenanced. So it could be a tough battle to see just how much action on climate change Albanese will be willing to take. Ben, the new ministry will be announced today. Get me excited more than I am right now over that. What are we expecting to see? Well, you'd be right to be excited. Um, Australia's uh, new parliament, uh, <laughs> sorry, new ministry announced today, uh, will be one of the most diverse uh, in Australia's history. And we're expecting to see the largest number of women uh, ever in an Australian ministry or cabinet. Um, there's also going to be the first ever female Indigenous person to hold the Ministry for Indigenous Affairs. Um, it's going to be a, a very diverse cabinet, but we're still sort of waiting to see the final look of that. And uh, then that will be sworn in tomorrow on Wednesday in Canada. And of course, uh, the foreign minister, Penny Wong, right, the first foreign born foreign minister that we've had in Australia. She was uh, in the region, in the Pacific Islands, really trying to do a bit of damage control almost immediately after the election. We've now seen this, uh, this, this situation where some of these nations are walking away from this proposed security and trade deal that was put forward by Beijing during uh, uh, Wang Yi's trip there. Does this mean that? This, this deal is sort of dead in the water or will they be amending this to go back for more negotiations? Yeah, the Chinese government has said that this isn't the end of that agreement. They are hoping to rework it and take it back to the Pacific Islands. But look, it's important not to lose um, perspective of just how significant China's actions in the Pacific have been recently. If you think about it, just six months ago, the idea that China might want to strike uh, security or trade agreements in the Pacific was very much a, um, a sort of theoretical international relations conversation. But now um, China has struck not one but two agreements in the Pacific and, you know, came to the point of even suggesting this multi-nation security and economic agreement in the Pacific. Now, you can see just how worried Australia and probably by uh, relation the United States is, but just by the speed at which Penny Wong, uh, Australia's new foreign minister, moved into the Pacific to visit just days after being sworn in into her new position. Um, as China is really on the march in the Pacific, and it remains to be seen whether Australia can uh, repair relations quickly enough to remain the partner of choice in the region.